As of late October of 2015, uh, according to the United States Copyright Office and the Librarian of Congress, you can hack your car. That sounds kind of silly because most people think of tinkering with their cars. And in the old days, that's what people would do. You'd take out your tools, you'd get under the hood, you'd tinker with it, you'd change the carburetor, whatever it was. Me, myself, no, I didn't do that much, so I can't tell you much about it. However, with the evolution of cars, uh, now most of what goes on inside a car is not mechanical or even electrical. It's managed by software, it's managed by computers. And, as you know, Software is controlled by copyright law. Interfering with the operation of software, or having a license to use the software as you do when you buy your car, doesn't entitle you to fidget with the, to fidget with the software. As of October of 2015, the Copyright Office and the Librarian of Congress have said, a year from now, you can. What? The purpose of that is to enable an owner of a car that has software on, uh, running under the hood to reverse engineer or to otherwise manipulate what the software does in order to manage the way the car operates without being considered a copyright infringer. Now the car manufacturers aren't happy about that and the Environmental Protection Agency isn't very happy about that. On the one hand they're worried about proprietary information, on the other hand the EPA is worried that you're going to change your car in order to make it more polluting. So as a result the Copyright Office and the Librarian of Congress have said, all right, for the first time ever that they've done this, you can, we're gonna, this rule will come into effect a year from now, giving the EPA and these other organizations enough time to figure out how to manage this process that used to be protected by software and now will not be.